everybody, and welcome to another episode of Epic Geek Out, the only show on the internet where Lara Croft raided a tomb and ran into Indiana Jones. I'm your host, Chad. I'm your host, Rob, and today we're going to be reviewing the new Tomb Raider game. As always, you can check us out over at Twitter, at Epic Geek Out. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Epic Geek Out, and also check out the website, www.epicgeekout.com. But let's get into our review of Tomb Raider. <laughs> So today we're talking about the brand new game in the Tomb Raider franchise called simply Tomb Raider. It uh, is published by Square Enix, developed by Crystal Dynamics, and it is a reboot of sorts. Mm -hmm. It is the Batman Begins. The Batman Tomb Begins, and that's actually kind of how they approached the mm -hmm. development of this game. They wanted to take the grittier, uh, vulnerable Lara Croft uh, that we're all very familiar with. It's such an iconic female character in video games. Um, growing up, I was a huge fan of the PC versions of Tomb Raider. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really ever play any of the recent, like, Legends yeah, or I played any, of the, recent um, any of the recent ones on consoles. But this, we did get to play on Xbox. And the story kind of talks about Lara's first mission uh, and how she kind of becomes the badass that she is. Mm -hmm. um, and... Yeah, it, Lara Croft, if you're not aware, um, she is a, um, an archaeologist and a badass chick. <laughs> um, she has two guns, typically. And this kind of takes back, a step back a little bit, and she has an arrow, a bow and arrow, mm -hmm. which is funny that we played two games in a, in a yeah. row in two weeks mm -hmm. that they have a bow and arrow as the primary weapon. It's a big, it's a big it's thing now. Thing, yeah. um, and she looks rather different than what we're used to, um, voiced by a brand new girl mm -hmm. for the games. So what did you think of your time with it? Yeah, so I really, really enjoyed my time with this game. I could not put it down. I, When I stopped playing, I actually wanted to go back and replay it, which is a lot for me for just a single because player game. it was a single yeah. player game. I was hooked into the story. So, you know, it's a mission that she kind of didn't, she was forced onto it. You know, she gets shipwrecked on an island. You know, the, the current inhabitants of the island are nuts and she has to defend herself unwillingly at first. And, you know, so kind of it goes from there. But I really enjoyed this game. I thought the pacing of the game was great. I enjoyed the fact that as you were kind of leveling up, you were acquiring, you know, different kind of guns. You know, you start with the handgun, then you move to the, you know, the old school, like World War II kind of um, mm -hmm. machine gun, shotgun kind of thing. And I just really enjoyed the progression of that and also her new abilities. It was very enjoyable. Th this was... They had stealth elements in it. It had, you know, just guns a-blazing elements in it. And I think it just combined everything really well. Also, you know, some puzzle-type elements to the game. So I could not put it down. I was engrossed with the story. I enjoyed the characters. I was curious as to what was happening next. I thought I beat the game, but I mm. didn't. It was this crazy cinematic moment, and it wasn't the end. You know, I won't go into what it was, but I'm like, oh man, I might actually have to go rent this game again just to, you know, devote a couple more hours to finishing up the story, or I'll just read its Wikipedia page. But um, <laughs> That's cheating. <laughs> I know, and that's probably what I'm going to do. But I did really enjoy this game, and I would recommend it to other people. There's a lot of different ways to play it, though it is kind of a game where it, it, it has you on rails without seeming like you're on rails, you know, there'll be one way you can go up or one way to solve the puzzle. But, you know, even besides that, I I really enjoyed this game. Yeah. Um, the one thing I do want to say is when you die, the deaths are <laughs> overly gruesome. And Yeah, I, I think that they always have been. I remember, like, the old school games but with the fall into a pit of, like, spikes and you'd be like... Yeah, yeah but with the crazy. new graphics, it, yeah. it seems this way. I mean, I was impaled with a pike through, <laughs> like, the bottom of my chin, yeah. shot in the neck with arrows ripped to shred by dogs, <laughs> which really makes you be like, I don't want to die anymore. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know if it had a good effect or something, but I just thought that that was worth noting. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I agree pretty much with everything you said. I think it's a very strong game. I think the story is completely there. Um, it, it it feels a little uncharted to me. Oh, absolutely. But, like it definitely took yeah. elements from that. They're like, but was okay, uncharted listen. feeling a little Tomb Raider? No, back no because in the day. I think I don't think Tomb Raider has ever had this strong of a story. Mm -hmm. I think they're like, okay, well, what did Uncharted do so well? Because it's basically Tomb Raider, and then they took the story mm -hmm. elements from that. Um, really cinematic moments, and they actually hired 
for the first time that they said, I don't know if ever in a game, but this uh, studio ever, they actually hired camera uh, experts from mm. like movies That's to good. kind of frame the, the cinematic moments. And you see um, that too. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. does translate. Yeah, so it's really interesting. I thought the graphics were amazing in this game. And Crisis last week, I mean, this is my opinion on Crisis. I didn't think the graphics were all that great. It kind of made me yearn for the next gen console. Mm -hmm. Whereas this, I feel like, I mean, I know that there's going to be better graphics for that next gen, but this was, just, I mean, I thought this was the, some of the best I've seen on Xbox. So, you really know, played with great. light and dark well, I mm -hmm. think. You know, she you have a so torch, real, yeah. and yeah, so. Yeah, um, made me even more attracted to her. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, yeah, but um, I was kind of worried going back into this. Like I said, I love the old Tomb Raider games on PC, um, but there's been so much change in video games since then, mm -hmm. and I feel like a lot of stuff that I've revisited hasn't held up for me. And I was like, is this like climbing mechanic and like pu platforming puzzle based um, game gonna be fun for me? Mm -hmm. And once you start climbing and doing the Tomb Raider stuff where you're like jumping the ledges, I mean, I was totally on board and I, I had a great time. So that part of it's awesome. They definitely improved combat mm -hmm. so much more from the, the previous games, which is awesome. The only thing that I kind of was a gripe for me was the combat was a little if you, if you didn't headshot the guy, you know, mm. he was going to live and it would take a bunch of shots to put him down. Mm. And, it, you know, sure. it, it was a little frustrating at and points for me. But also, you know, on that note, a couple frustrating moments, you know, she's the lightest. All the bad guys are guys and mm -hmm. they're obviously heavier than her. But everything she steps on falls and you <laughs> yeah. fall a lot in this movie yeah. or game rather it, you fall constantly in this yeah. and I mean again it's unrealistic it's a Tomb Raider game but I mean she takes some yeah. licks and keeps on ticking and it's just it's ridiculous because you see the guys walking on it and then you're walking yeah. on it and it falls yeah. and stuff like that also um, this does implement like some quick time mechanic yeah, to it just, which yeah. I normally don't like but I kind of enjoyed in this it was yeah I did and I was not gonna, over I was gonna speak to that I think the beginning was a little too heavy on the, it was. the quick time I'll agree with because you. all they're doing in pretty much the first hour until you kind of get captured I don't yeah, want definitely to the that first part. like 45 minutes um, you're basically just doing quick time event and they're just setting up cinematic mm -hmm. scenes that are pretty much on rails. And then from there, yeah. it's not as much on rails. It mm -hmm. still is, but you can at least go off and explore and find collectibles. And, and you can like also, that. from your camps, go back to other camps to find mm -hmm. collectibles you haven't found and things like that. Yeah. I didn't get into any of that. I was just trying to progress the story along, but that is cool. You know, then they had a bunch of other things like light this statue, burn this uh, mm -hmm. thing off the wall, find these eggs kind yeah. of things. And I really, in, like the, uh, I really like the upgrade system at mm -hmm. the camps where you could upgrade your weapons or your skills. And usually with those kind of RPG elements in these sorts of games, I'm not a huge fan of it. But here I thought it was executed really well. And I agree. Cool, you know? And a lot of the cool, like, how you can light your torch and, like, mm -hmm. light stuff on fire, I thought that was really cool. And just the zip lining was really yeah, cool. There's a lot of really cool things that felt new to me in this game. Mm -hmm. um, new to the, both the Tomb Raider franchise and also just new in general, which was yeah. refreshing for a game, you know? I mean, it's been in the making for three years. Yeah, so I think it's, it's great upgrades with keeping some of the things that you know and love and then, you know, starting it fresh. And, yeah. you know, I'm really excited to see what the next game is, if it's kind of like the Dark Knight to the Batman Begins, <laughs> if it really steps it up even more yeah. and, you know, yeah. continues it. So very good game. Um, I did play the multiplayer briefly. It's not good, but <laughs> it, it's Tomb Raider, so you're not really getting it for mm -hmm. the multiplayer. I mean, I feel like the multiplayer is very, like, stacked for one side. Like, mm -hmm. if you're on the one side, you're going to win pretty much every time. But, yeah. And yeah, plus, it's, it's not as cool not playing as Lara Croft. So, yeah. And you play yeah. as the other survivors. So, mm -hmm. check it out. Um, Tomb Raider, it just came out this past week, so um, it should be available pretty much everywhere now. <laughs> So that time has come again to give some thanks and share some of our geek wisdom for you. Rob, what's your thanks today? I'd like to thank another movie that I recently saw, uh, Your Sister's Sister, which is just, it's an indie drama, maybe more Sisters. drama. Sister. Yeah, drama comedy. Isn't and that your sister as well? No? No, your it's... Sister. That's very confusing. It was like I his know. friend's sister uh, kind of thing. You, I got you. Um, <laughs> it's really just one of those like slice of life uh, movies where it's kind of just like this one thing happening in this one person's life. But um, you, you can't really give much away, but it stars Mark uh, Duplass from uh, The League, who I've become a big fan of his, and his movies, like Safety Not Guaranteed, I think he plays great roles in it. And it's it's 
hard to explain. Um, basically, he's kind of reeling from the loss of his brother, and he goes to this cabin, which is his friend, or not really a cabin, but like shore house kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and her, her, it's his friend who is a female. Her sister happens to be there, and things happen. So, um, it's kind of confusing. All right, <laughs> look up the IMDb for a better explanation of this movie. But I enjoyed the movie, and I think it's it probably flew under a lot under a lot of people's radar, and yeah, they no, didn't it. check it. So check it out. Cool. Um, this week has kind of been a trip down memory lane for us. Uh, we played Tomb Raider and also um, SimCity, which we'll be reviewing next mm -hmm. week. But another game that kind of falls in that pantheon for me of just games that I loved growing up, because I was a huge, more, more so PC gamer mm -hmm. growing up, um, was Roller Coaster Tycoon. <laughs> Which is very similar to SimCity, but this game I would spend hours making roller coasters mm -hmm. that would self-destruct. Like <laughs> you would go up and fall, and then the next car would just explode, and people would be screaming. Style. It was awesome. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's a game that I really think that they should remake one of these days. I think that there's been more since the one I played. I think I played two or three mm. was the last one I played. But um, yeah, I think that could really be a fun. I'll fun one up play. you, and they should remake Dino Park. Uh, I love Dino Park. That Tycoon. was the best. <laughs> I love that game. So many fun games. So um, make sure you check back next week. We're going to be reviewing SimCity, as we just said, and uh, something else, a movie. So <laughs> check back. Uh, thanks for watching this episode, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>